Hey guys, this is Bernard from English OTP and today I'm going to bring you the next video on Crooked Letter, Crooked Letter. Okay guys, I know that many of you have been waiting for this and you know, you've let me know in comments that you've enjoyed the last couple of videos and that they've helped you and I'm super happy about that. And some of you, of course, are doing their exams at the moment and yeah, so maybe I can just get this out and maybe another video um, tomorrow um, that can help you, further help you with uh, your preparation. And I know that some of you might have also oral exams on the topic, so this is something, you know, if you have questions, please continue to send them. I've had a lot of lovely questions come into the channel, really good questions I've enjoyed answering. And yeah, so keep them coming. Let me know where I can help you and I'll try to do my best to help you with that. Um, today we're going to be talking about maybe one of the central topics in the novel app overall and that is friendship and belonging and yeah let's just dive right in um, i sort of split it up into three sections and let's be quite honest we all know that belonging and friendship are things in the novel that we could talk about for hours a 10 minute video is much too short but let's just try to get it in there I want to talk about how friendship and belonging are interconnected first. Then I want to talk about which places or which other people do the characters belong to um, in the novel. And the last thing I want to talk about is what does friendship mean to the different characters? As I said, which, this is just going to be a wild ride trying to get through this in as short of a space as possible. And if you have questions about any of those aspects, just hit me up in the comments. Um, how, how friendship and belonging interconnected. Some food for thought for you. Uh, if you check the Collins Dictionary, it says belonging is defined as a secure relationship or affinity. So a secure relationship that would of course be to a partner maybe or to a family, to a friend. And um, a, an affinity can also be you know, towards a thing or a place. Um, um, a relationship is always something that is reciprocal. That means um, if I have a relationship to someone, he also has a relationship to me. And affinity can be something that I can have towards something or someone who doesn't have the same affinity to me. So I can have an affinity for a place. Obviously, the place cannot have an affinity to me, but I can have an affinity for a person and that person cannot have an affinity to me. And this is the case, of course, for Larry, right? Larry has an affinity to Silas and Silas doesn't quite share this affinity. In fact, Larry has an affinity to many people, but many people do not have an affinity for Larry. So that's something to keep in mind. And for Silas, it's really the other way around. A lot of people have an affinity for him, but a deep relationship to, to those people is something that he rarely has. The next point would be friendship and family are two of the most important forms of belonging. I think I, I know that you know this, um, but again, this is a central part of the novel. How is friendship and belonging interconnected? Which role do the families play? Which role does Larry's family play for him? Um, which role does his father play? Which role does Silas' father play? Which role does Silas' mother play and Larry's mother play? So how is that connected? How important are the friends for those two? I want you to think of the role that um, friendship and family play in the novel. A shared father, two loving mothers, a son Larry who really loves his mother back, who needs her, and a son Silas who is borderline cold to his mother. And uh, I think this will become clearer when we look at the next part, and that is which places or people do the characters belong to. Um, I want to start with Silas. So first of all, places. Silas belongs to Chicago. When they move from Chicago, he really misses Chicago. He had a, a great group of friends. He lived near the baseball stadium. He fell in love with baseball in Chicago. He felt really well there and then he moves to the country and 
everything is different and the people are different and the mentality is different and the communities are are not more mixed but they're much closer and but he does develop this really strong affinity and feeling of belonging for Chabot. We know that when he's older, he really identifies with the South. He identifies with Chabot. He, um, he identifies with the people. So he has a strong belonging to Chicago, but in the end, he develops a strong belonging to Chabot. And this is the case as well, because he is generally well liked in society. So we know the people love him, right? So he, Sometimes he gets slipped food from um, from this diner lady for free. So she calls him darling or whatever. I can't quite remember what she calls him. Um, his colleagues really like him. His uh, teammates liked him when he was at school. He was really well respected. Always a cool kid. Always a cool kid. Right. So um, to him, it was easy to belong. Right. If we know that friendship is important for belonging and friendship is something that always came easily to Silas. So a lot of people wanted to have him as a friend. It's easy to see how he could really fit in quickly in the community that he was moved into when they left Chicago. But, and this is the big but with Silas, we know that he has problem, problems with maintaining a relationship, right? So he's been through a lot of girlfriends and uh, Angie, his uh, girlfriend, when in the second part of the novel, is the first person that seems to be getting a grasp on him. And he, he seems to really appreciate her much and appreciate the relationship he has with her. But still, there is this scene in White Trash Ave with probably a very attractive young lady, but still no reason to... Well, I think you, you remember the scene, you know, they get drunk and then one thing comes to the next. So um, do you remember? Did they go to bed with each other? Did they not? Maybe you can find out. Um, so he still, although he really likes Angie, he has problems with maintaining a relationship. And Larry's completely different. So when we talk about the place Larry belongs to, Larry doesn't belong to Chabot. Larry doesn't even belong to Amos. So maybe you guys know um, we have Chabot as the main setting and close to Chabot, relatively close to Chabot, is a really small hamlet. That's a very, very small village, only two, three houses. And that one's called Amos. And Larry doesn't even live in Amos. Like not even in this tiny village does he live. Not even in this hamlet, but outside of it. So spatially, Larry is separated. Spatially, Larry is not collected, connected. He doesn't belong to a community. So he doesn't even live in a village. He doesn't even live in a hamlet. Right, guys? So he's completely, spatially, he's completely isolated. What Larry belongs to is his house, his garden, and his land. So his house and grounds. He still has some land, right? You know that he sells it to, to make money, but he still has some grounds, house and grounds. And the funny thing is the only person, it's not funny really, um, the only person he shares it with is his chickens. So uh, space-wise, setting-wise, place-wise, he doesn't belong to anything that he shares with someone else. Okay, so if you talk about belonging, he basically belongs to nothing. Okay, so, and his relationships are completely different to Silas's relationships. So he has a lot of relationships. Larry has one. Silas has problems with maintaining a relationship. Larry is completely the, the other way around. So he has one relationship and the person he has a relationship with has problems with maintaining a relationship because his mother, his only relationship has Alzheimer's. So she can't even remember in, him on some days. Sometimes she doesn't know who he is. Sometimes she does. Sometimes they speak a bit, but she forgets what they say. Right? So not only does he only have one contact, but this one contact is incapable of having a relationship, a real relationship with him. So he's the one who's investing into the relationship all the time. He keeps it up, the relationship. Silas doesn't keep up any relationships. They all keep them up for him. 
sort of because um, they all like him so much. And this is the same when he's younger, maybe less when he's older, but still. I think you get the picture. And the last point, what does friendship mean to the different characters? Um, I think this is the, maybe the point where it, it gets clearest because for Silas, his view of what friendship means really changes throughout the novel. Right? This is what makes him a round character. Um, so he says, you know, when there is in hospital and there's this scene uh, with Silas and they talk about their connection and uh, then Larry asks Silas, we were friends, weren't we, Silas? And, you know, this is when he realizes all the stuff that he's done. And then um, Silas says, you were Larry, he said, I don't know what I was. Because at this moment or before, slightly before that, he realizes for him what friendship means and the kind of, you know, relationships and friendships that he's had. He's always been so well liked. It was so easy for him to make friends, to hang out with the cool kids. All he did was hang out with people that he benefited from. People from baseball, the cool kids from school. He only hung out with Larry when no one knew about it. So he took from the relationships, he took that away what he needed. Also from his ex-girlfriends. But he didn't invest into the friendship. He didn't take responsibility. And this is, you know, this is the quote in the novel where he admits that friendship actually means responsibility. And he realizes that not only in his friendship or his relationship to Larry, but also in his relationship to his mother, he didn't take that responsibility. And his, his view of friendship changes from something that he benefits from to something that others should also benefit from. This is one of the turning points. And the other part about friendship, that is Larry. And we know that from when he's really young, um, Larry has few friends, no friends at all. And there's this nightly prayer that his mother prays with him. She sits down with him on his bed when he's in bed. And she says, she prays to God and she says, send Larry a special friend. And of course we know in, the course of the narrative there are two people two friends who are sent who are sent whatever you want to you know see it and the first one is uh, silas and for his parents he's not a real friend because he's black right so and for larry he's a friend for silas we're not quite sure right he he sort of he doesn't really admit that um, larry's his friend until really late in the narrative until he understands what friendship means so this is the first friend, but we know, you know, the friendship falls apart. And the second friend is Wallace. And Wallace isn't a great person and he's not at all anywhere like Larry, who's just basically a really nice guy. But he notices what friendship means and how much he needs friendship when he meets Wallace. And this is, you know, this is another central quote that I think you guys need to know until you ate you didn't know how hungry you were, how empty you'd become. And um, this is, you know, Larry compares the feeling of being hungry and of needing food to the feeling of needing friends, of needing relationships. And, you know, even though Wallace is a horrible person, for him, he now realizes how much he needs someone else. You know, even if the food is bad, we could say, you need food. And, you know, I just going to say this again until you ate you didn't know how hungry you were how empty you'd become and this is exactly the reason the basis for the friendship between larry and wallace okay guys so um, that was the quick recap for friendship and if you have any questions you know let me know in the comments let me know till um till tomorrow saturday so maybe i can get back to you on sunday um i have a further announcement for a video i'm gonna um upload tomorrow and it's going to be on the plot it's going to be on the friendship of silas and larry so it's going to be a really central um video that i think will help you to relive the plot to relive the friendship between larry and silas how it all starts out how it's connected to 
um, the disappearances. I think that's going to be helpful. So um, if you like that, check it out. I hope I'm going to upload it tomorrow morning. And yeah, as always, love to you guys. All the best. And uh, see you soon.